Welcome everyone to our online service for Easter Wednesday. And this afternoon we use the prayer for the close of the day on page 298 in the Lutheran service book. Page 298. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Almighty, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing praise to your name, O Most High. To herald your love in the morning. Your truth at the close of the day. The reading today is from the book of Acts chapter 3, beginning with verse 13. Men of Israel, Peter said, as he addressed the people, why do you wonder at this? Why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made this man walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of your fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy One and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given this man his perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that this Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you. Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we can talk about what it is that pastors preach about, what are sermons about. And what we have here is the first sermon of St. Peter after the day of Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, in which he preached to people who were witnesses of what had happened, and they proclaimed that they were witnesses too, but they interpreted what had happened in light of the whole scripture, and so they brought in the words of the prophets, they brought in the names, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this brings me to the first thing that pastors do. They proclaim that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the Bible. Pastors always preach from the Bible, or should do. And not just stories from the Bible, but that the central theme of the Bible is our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one to whom the Old Testament points and the New Testament testifies. Pastors always preach what we call the law. That is, all of those things in the Bible which show us that we are sinners before God and needed a savior. Without preaching that, then the, the purpose of Jesus coming into the world could easily be lost somewhere. The true purpose of Jesus coming into the world was to save sinners. As Jesus himself said, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Now, he would have come into the world to condemn the world if he wanted to, because we are all sinners who deserve to be condemned. And in this case, St. Peter was able to tell the people, you actually denied 
the Holy One of God. You actually put the righteous one to death by your sins. Now, there are different sins that we pastors can call to your minds and to our own minds. But the same idea is the concept of preaching the law, that like a mirror, we see ourselves as we really are, worthy to be condemned. But then we preach the gospel, that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, although he could have. Instead, he sent his son into the world that the world might be saved through him. And that is what Peter and the apostles and pastors today also proclaim, that we can be assured and certain that God's Son came into the world to be the sacrifice that makes the forgiveness of our sins possible. When God sent his Son into the world and gave him into the world that he might be the sacrifice that makes atonement for human sin. He was making it possible for times not of condemnation, but of refreshment, not of judgment, but of justification to come into the world. And that is what Peter finishes up with in his sermon, that God's ultimate purpose is that times of refreshment come to human beings who know that through Jesus Christ, through faith in him, just as that man was healed by faith in Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, so through Jesus Christ, you can be forgiven of your sins. Your sins, as he put it, can be blotted out and times of refreshment come. In these times of fear, times of uncertainty, times of disease, times of sorrow, we can have times of refreshment coming into the picture. And that is what Jesus brings through the message of forgiveness. That if we repent, and this is a message um, of repentance that St. Peter preaches there, he says, um, repent therefore and turn back, your sins can be blotted out. And whatever else these times may be for you, they can be times of refreshment through that message of the gospel that Jesus Christ is your Savior. Come to forgive your sins. Come to die for them. Come to rise from the dead so that you can be justified before God. I hope that this sermon brought that message to you and that every other sermon will likewise bring you times of refreshment from God. We conclude with the prayers on page 298, as well as a hymn. We begin with these words printed on the middle of the page. Lord, Lord, now you let, let your servant go in peace. peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank, thank you, you, my Heavenly Father, Father through, through Jesus Christ, Christ your dear Son, Son that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins, for I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. 
For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us sing him 877. 877. God who made the earth and heaven. God who made the earth and heaven, darkness and light, you the day for work have given, for rest and night. May your angel God defend us, slumber sweet, your mercy send us, Holy dreams and hopes attend us all through the night. And when born again shall call us to run life's way, may we still water before us your will obey. From the power of we will hide us in the narrow path, great guide us. Never be your smile denied us all through the day. Guide us waking, guide us sleeping, and when we die. May we have your mighty keeping for peaceful life. When the last red calls awake us, when our Lord do not forsake us, but to reign in glory take us with you on high. Holy Father, throned in heaven, our Holy Son, Holy Spirit, freely given, blessed in one. Grant us grace, we now implore you, till we lay our crowns before you. And in worthy strains adore you while ages run. 